If you've ever built anything from the ground up, then you know the importance of a strong foundation. It doesn't matter if it's a house of cards, if it's a tower of Legos, or if it's an actual house that you're building. If you don't have a strong foundation, that thing is just going to topple over in time. And the same thing is true with uh, our study of communication. So it's important that we start with a look, even just a brief look at the communication basics, laying that firm foundation um, for further study in a, in, a, in a different area or a more specific area of communication. But we got to start at the beginning. So let's just um, jump into the, the very basics of communication. So we're starting on the same page. We have that firm foundation. So first of all, just to define communication very quickly, communication is very simply the process of understanding and sharing meaning. That's what we mean when we say communication. It's, it's one person or a group of people trying to communicate something and share a, a sense of meaning with another person or group of people. So communication is simply the process of understanding and sharing meaning. As you may know from previous studies, uh, there's a, a particular process that takes place in communication. We have a whole other video on this that you can check it out if you want the details or want to hear about this in detail and understand this graphic a little in a little more detail. But basically, these are the elements of the communication process. Communicator A has a message that they want to send to Communicator B. They communicate that message through a particular channel. That's the method through which it's communicated. Communicator B is also communicating in return. They have that feedback, creating that constant, not even a loop, but just a constant uh, um, uh, expression between the two. Um, the message and the feedback going back and forth uh, at all times. Uh, there is noise that interferes with the sending and receiving of this message. And that can, that noise could be anything, whether it's physical, physiological, psychological. Uh, again, these are things you get into in, in other videos in more detail, but, and then all of this happens in a particular context, right? Within the realm of this, whatever context that it's in, and that plays an important part. So you, you put these seven elements together and you have the process of communication. Now there are a lot of variables at work in, in all of these, almost a countless number of variables for every particular element here. So there's, it's, it's, it can be quite complex, but it really boils down to these seven things. That's the process of communication. Again, if you haven't um, watched that video or don't have an understanding of the transactional model of communication, I encourage you to, to check that out. We'll put the link down below, but uh, that'll give you a fuller explanation. But here, we just want to remind you that communication is a process and it relates to these seven elements in particular. There are different levels of communication. Again, there are other videos we have that'll go into this in more detail, but just to briefly review and recap these, you have intrapersonal communication, which is just communication that happens within oneself, right? So when you're talking to yourself, when you're having thoughts, when you're playing an argument out in your head, that's all intrapersonal communication. You also have interpersonal communication, which is communication between two people within the context of a relationship, whether that's a romantic relationship, friendship, family relationship, uh, even work relationship that you have with a coworker. That's interpersonal communication uh, that takes place between two people within the context of a relationship. There are different rules then that kind of uh, and guidelines that exist for group communication. That's another level when you have three or more people working toward a common purpose or goal. That's what we would define as a group. And there are certain elements of communication that are different for that type of environment and that type of context. So there's group communication. We also have everybody's favorite public communication, you know, clearly defined by public speaking, one person sharing a message with a group of people. Um, and so that, that has you know, different rules and different expectations with it as well. Finally, we have mass communication. This is communication where a person or a group of people is trying to communicate with as broad an audience as they possibly can. And there's always some form of technology that's used as a medium or a channel between those two people. So um, there are, again, different elements and different rules. And that's not correct. same elements, same seven elements, but different ways that we apply them and different kind of rules that apply to those same seven elements. But the, the transactional model of communication is at work in every one of these levels or, or forms of communication. So um, those seven elements, again, become very, very important to us. A few principles of communication I just want to share with you again briefly here. We're moving fairly quickly, but this is just an overview. This is just a recap, hopefully to refresh your memory. If you need more detail on this, please, um, you know, consult one of our other videos or one of the other resources available to you um, for that. But just real quickly, here's some principles of communication, some things to keep in mind. Communication can be intentional or unintentional. All of us have moments where we say something and then immediately think, oh, I didn't mean to say that, or I hope they didn't hear that, or I you know, didn't mean for that to be overheard or, or seen or whatever. 
sometimes we're very intentional about the way we communicate. And sometimes we communicate unintentionally or people interpret things with a meaning that we did not intend. So communication can be intentional, but it can also be unintentional. Communication is irreversible, though, whether it's intentional or unintentional. The one thing we can't do is take it back. Okay? There are no takes backs in communication. Once you say something, even if you say, well, we'll scrub that, forget I said that, uh, check that, uh, then the other person says, OK, no problem. They're not really going to forget it. I mean, they may try to move on, but it's still going to be there. Once it's out there, it's out there. It's irreversible. Communication is unrepeatable, right? There's an old, uh, old proverb that says no man ever steps in the same river twice. It's not the same river and he's not the same man. And so what that means is, you know, you step in a river and you, you got that water there and then you step out. Even if you step back in immediately, it's different water. That water has moved downstream. You're also a different person. You know what it's like to step in that river. You know what to expect. So that it's a different experience. Communication is the same way. It's unrepeatable. doesn't matter if we're saying the exact same thing to the exact same person. It's going to be different each time. Not necessarily better or worse, just different. Think about the phrase, I love you. Think about, you know, a couple that's been together for a long, long time, right? It's a, a, an older couple who's been together for a long time. How many times have they said, I love you to one another? And yet each time it's a little different because they're a little different, right? They've grown. They've, uh, first of all, it's never the same. It's not the same the second time you hear it as the first time, right? There's something special about that first time. But then over time, if they've had kids, they've had a life together, they've had joy and they've had pain and so forth. And I love you takes on a different meaning. Again, not necessarily better or worse or more meaningful or less meaningful, just different because that communication is unrepeatable. Uh, in that exact context, in that exact sense that you said it before. Communication has content and relational dimensions. This is really important. Um, I, I tend to think of it sometimes like if you were at work, right? And you had, you had this person at work and you wanted to ask them if they wanted to do something, whether it's, it doesn't have to be a date. It could just be if they wanted to go hang out or something, right? So, uh, but you, ask, so you ask this person at work, you've, you've kind of gotten to know them a little bit and you ask them if they want to do something this Saturday and they say, sorry, I'm busy this Saturday. Those are the words they use. Okay. But there are a variety of ways they can say that and some things we can communicate saying the same things, right? Maybe they say it with an expression of, oh man, I, I, sorry, I'm busy this Saturday. But they give you, you know, through their facial expressions and the way they say it and things that they give you that impression that, oh, if this were another Saturday, I would love to, but I've got this thing going on and I can't get out of it. Okay, that's one way they could say it. But another way would be, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm busy this Saturday and give you that facial expression that says, not only am I busy this Saturday, but I'm busy every Saturday for the rest of eternity, right? So uh, they, they give you those two things, right? So which one, you know, depending on how we say it, uh, that, that has a major influence on how somebody interprets it and how we, how we express it. So there's, there's first the content dimension. There's what is said and the content dimension in this example did not change either time, right? The content dimension was I'm busy this Saturday. So they were telling you that they're not available this Saturday, right? But they said it in those two different ways, right? And the different ways they said it are what we call the relational dimension. How they express something, communicate something about how they feel about that message, about how they feel about that person, and, and you know, some, some subtext that they may be trying to communicate there as well. So every message, every, uh, every form of communication, every, every bit of communication has both that content dimension, what is being said, and then the relational dimension of how it's being said and what else that communicates then. So communication has content and relational dimensions. Also, people give communication its meaning. This is important to remember. You know, we think of words as these, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of magical things, right? <clears throat> that, that uh, you know, are sent down from on high. But the truth is um, the words have no meaning. In and of themselves, words are just, you know, created things. We, we put them together. It's a random collection of, of random symbols that we made up and we put together in a certain order. And then we just agree on what they mean. So words themselves have no meaning. It's people and their connection, their, their, their connected meaning and, and their hopefully unified meaning of what that word means and represents that is important. Sometimes we think of it like this too. The only difference between these two notes is your belief that one has more value than the other. 
So the difference between a legal U.S. tender United States $100 bill and, and a Monopoly $100 bill, they're both made of paper. They both use special ink. They both have different colors, right? And they both represent different things. But we know that one has actual value in the real world and one only has value in Monopoly. Why? Because we share that meaning. That's that's the only thing that gives that that other, you know, one more meaning than the other is that we agree. We all have, have collectively agreed that this is the legal U.S. tender dollar and you can't give me your Monopoly $100 bill and expect to buy something with it outside of that game. Communication is the exact same way. The, what gives words or other symbols their meaning is our shared understanding of what those things represent and what they mean. So at this point, sometimes we're thinking, you know, well, what does all this mean? How do I know if I'm doing this right? What is the importance here? And how do we measure effective communication? Well, we measure effective communication through what we call communication competence. And very simply, communication competence is engaging in communication with others that is both effective and appropriate within a given context. So we're measuring it along two different axes, right? Is this effective? Meaning, am I achieving my goal with this communication? And is this appropriate? Am I communicating in the most appropriate way? And then that last part is important too, within that given context. So understanding that what is appropriate here may not be appropriate somewhere else. And, and what's appropriate in one situation may not be as appropriate or effective in another. So communication competence is communicating in a way that is both effective and appropriate for that given context. So some specific things that we look for in communication competence, the elements that make up competence are, first of all, having a large repertoire of skills. I think of this as having a lot of tools in your tool belt, right? a lot of communication tools in your tool belt. If you're going to build a house, you need more than just a hammer. You need some other tools to go along with that, right? To be an effective communicator, we need to be more than just a one trick pony. We need to have a lot of different communication skills that we can pull out of our communication tool belt. So we need to develop a large repertoire of skills to uh, have communication competence. Then we also have to be adaptable. Again, this has to work within a given context. So we have to be able to know when to use a hammer and when to use a screwdriver and when to use, you know, whatever else, a saw. So we need to be adaptable and be able to pull out the right skill at the right time. So we need to um, have that ability. We also need to be able to perform that skill uh, skillfully, perform those things skillfully, right? We need to not only select the right tool, but know how to use it. How do we, how do we have to first pick the right tool for the job? Then we have to be able to use that tool effectively. We also need to develop empathy. And now keep in mind, empathy is just being able to relate to and understand somebody else's perspective. It's not a matter of, you don't necessarily have to agree with that person or endorse what they're saying, but it is important for us to be able to understand what somebody's saying and relate to that, maybe understand where they're coming from and why that might be important to them. So we don't have to necessarily agree, but we do need to be able to empathize and develop those skills. We also need to develop cognitive complexity meaning that we can see things from those different perspectives. We can have a contradicting idea in our head, mull it over, turn it around, look at it from different perspectives, really seek to understand it, um, with, maybe without even rejecting it out of hand. That's important too in cognitive complexity. It doesn't mean, again, we have to endorse it or eventually agree with it, but we ought to be able to hold these contradicting ideas in our head and evaluate them and look at them from different perspectives. And finally, we need to develop self-awareness and self-monitoring. We ought to be able to look at ourselves and our, and our skills and, and all those things that we're doing as communicators. And first of all, be aware whether or not something is working, whether or not it's effective, be able to judge that in that moment and at that time, hopefully. And then also be a, you know, conscientious of what our, what our skills are and whether they're being effective and then being able to change them. Right. And, and monitoring ourselves and saying, okay, that didn't work in this situation. So what else can I do here? What else might I have tried? Um, what can I do next time? And, uh, and just being aware of our communication skills and, and continually uh, trying to grow those and, and help them be more adaptable. So now that we're at the end of this, you may be thinking, what's the point of all this? Isn't, isn't just all this just common sense? Is this really something that I needed to, to learn about? And it's communication. We're just born with it, right? Or not born with it. Well, you know, people say, well, is it just common sense? And I was remind them of what Voltaire said. You know, common sense is not so common. So even if it is common sense, that doesn't mean we always display those things, right? 
uh, we have lots of miscommunication, even if it's common sense. So it's, it, it behooves us to, to learn about these things and to, to develop these skills and understand that it is a skill that requires our practice and requires our, our awareness of those things. It's not just something that's going to naturally happen. We have to work at these things over time. And I promise you, no matter what your profession and no matter what your personal circumstances, these things will pay dividends. Becoming a more effective communicator will pay off in the long run. So be sure that you're paying attention to these even basic level things and building that strong foundation. If you have questions about this or anything else related to communication, uh, please feel free to, to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. And in the meantime, I hope that you have a better understanding of the basics of communication and have started to build that strong foundation.